what is going on everybody uh exciting day for me i'm picking up my new to me motorcycle as you guys can see in the thumbnail i'm not trying to leave you with any type of uh guess or wonders this ain't a clickbait video i'm super excited i am finally picking myself up a 1992 harley davidson daytona edition 50th anniversary of the daytona bike week a few key things about this motorcycle this is one of harley's very first true pearl paint job bikes harley davidson in 1992 came up with this paint scheme uh pearls were really getting big in the automotive world and uh harley stepped on board and i think correct me if i'm wrong probably 90 percent of the paints other than vivid black have pearls in them today so this bike kind of started that trend uh, a lot of other super super cool things about this motorcycle but it's one of 1700 it's always been a bucket list bike of mine to have but i wanted the right one when you have a bike that's made in low production numbers Harley Davidson's as a whole, you know, they, they do the special air cleaner, uh, whether it's like the FXR, you know, the threes and the four, and the Grand Sports and all those things. The air cleaner used to state what the bike was. Things like that go for insane money if you can't find them or if they're not on your motorcycle when you purchase it. This bike has a very unique air filter. It has a very unique seat that says the word Daytona. The backrest says Daytona. And the front headlight visor has like a little placard that's actually the number plaque. So it's all on the motorcycle. This bike is perfect. It's a one owner motorcycle. I'm very, very, very stoked to have it. So we're gonna run home. I'm on my phone right now. So if the audio sounds a little weird or if the footage is seeming a little weird, that's why I don't have time to grab my GoPro. I don't have time for any of that. We're hauling ass there. We're gonna see it get unloaded together. Uh, this bike came from Portland, Oregon. Very good guy. Uh, his name is Jim. I've had the pleasure of, of working with him on this deal for about two weeks now. And uh, I am super excited to be the next caregiver of this motorcycle. I've had a lot of a lot of Harley Davidsons and they've always been like a unique color or just something special about them. Uh, and this is no exemption. And what's so difficult about this bike is it is 100% stock minus the original owner adding a windshield. Still stock mufflers, it's stock everything. Um, I have so much documentation on this motorcycle from all the service records, his original bill of sale when he bought the bike brand new, the owner's manual, the dealership uh, brochure, even a letter that was sent by Harley giving him a coffee mug was all in this binder that he put together. So um, I am super happy for this motorcycle. Um, I'm going to go over with you guys the bike and then I'm also going to go over with you guys how I go about purchasing these motorcycles over the internet. So. There is a trick to it. There's a way to not get burned. And I'm not talking about by scammers. I'm talking about by getting something that's not what you think you're getting. Because I can take a photo of any motorcycle or any car, vehicle, whatever. And from so many feet away, it's gonna look amazing. Uh, I'm gonna go over some of the things that I've done over the past 20 or so bike deals where I've bought motorcycles. You know, how I feel comfortable sending that kind of money. How I go about setting up a truck and how I go about, you know, all those different things. And then what I'll do is kind of give you, you know, the pointers so that if you want to do the same, you feel free to do the same. So either way, we're on the way to the house, about 10 minutes out. Driver should be there within 15 and we'll see this bike together. We'll see you there. There he comes. He's coming up the street right now. So we'll get to see this thing unloaded for the first time together. Man, I am so, so, so happy for this. Let's go. My new to me 1992 Harley Davidson Daytona. So I rode over here under a little shade so I'm not sweating as much while I try to go over the bike with you guys, show you exactly what I have and then what my plans are with it. And then I'm gonna pick back up when I'm in the house or in the shop or whatever and kind of explain to you guys how I went about purchasing it, 
uh, some of the things that I did to protect myself, uh, protect the seller, obviously, and getting it shipped to me. So uh, here it is, 1992 Daytona. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful bike. I uh, bought it from the original owner. Like I said, he was in Portland, Oregon. Uh, bought this bike brand new in 1991, has all the documents for it. Bike needs a little cleaning up, you know, the typical little flaking on the black and, and some things. I do have some mufflers coming for it. I went ahead and found some old school, genuine Screaming Eagle, pretty much new old socks, slip-ons. Um, and then there's a couple of little things I wanna do, but for the most part, this is how the bike's gonna stay. I don't have any real plans to do a lot to it. Um, Running it over here, I am gonna swap the buckhorn. So I was kind of questioning if I was gonna pull the buckhorns off or not, but I'm gonna go with more of a uh, short riser kind of moto bar setup just for comfort. Uh, I'm gonna save all this stuff, obviously. All this stuff will be put away in a box, labeled, marked, whatever. I do not plan on getting rid of this bike. I hope and God willing, and I know everyone's gonna laugh. I've had my low rider S now for three years. So I'm hoping I can keep this thing for quite, quite a number of years. Just look how beautiful this bike is all original got the daytona seat the daytona air cleaner obviously the beautiful beautiful paint like i said first year that harley ever used like a pearl in their paint job all the you know this stuff usually flakes it's all in great great shape the frame is super clean uh it is missing the reflectors i have a pair of these i believe i'm gonna locate them um other than that you know a little cleaning up nothing big nothing too bad but like the axle nut look how clean those are all the other hardware everything's like super super clean on this bike i am tickled pink on this thing i'm just very very happy thank you again so much jim um the bike is everything that you said it was going to be and the bike has sixteen thousand two hundred fifty miles on it show you guys all the letters on the buttons still in great shape so this bike is number 372 out of 1700 Gold wheels are factory. The gold rear pulley is factory. This bike actually came stock with the highway pegs, which is super cool. I'm almost 100% sure this is my FXR tour bike. So I know a few other guys are gonna be on some Evos, some other things like that. I know the Brella brothers are gonna be riding down from Colorado to Born Free, Texas, and they just got their FXRs up and running. So it's not an FXR, but it's an FXD, D. So uh, close enough, it's still an old school. Uh, very, very sought after bike. And uh, this is what I'm gonna do the FXR tour on. So uh, when we get back home and get this bike back in the garage, I gotta get back to work. On my way back to work, I'll explain to you again how I protected myself in purchasing this, uh, the steps that I take, and we'll go from there. All right, back on this bike. It is hot, like hot, hot. Uh, sweating a little bit, a little wet, but got the bike back in the garage. So here's how I found the bike. A surf and cycle trader came across the ad, reached out to the gentleman. What I do anytime that I buy a bike online, it doesn't matter if I'm buying it an hour and a half away or whatever. I don't wanna waste my time. Every bike that I've ever purchased, I ask for a few things. Up close shots of the engine, both sides. Up close shots of the front wheel, rear wheel, particularly around the brake rotor itself uh reason being if it's spoke wheels mag wheels whatever those are usually the first things that kind of get corroded so uh just being that close to the ground and they get overlooked a lot when they get washed so you know people will wash the chrome and they'll wash the the tins but the wheels do get a lot of the debris left on them. so if the wheels are very tarnished it just makes you start looking at other things on the bike so uh same thing with the brake rotors the hardware for the brake rotors if they look all crummy and gross and brake rotors are gross and the calibers the, you know that you could tell they've been leaking brake fluid or the banjo fittings are full of rust um, those are just telltale signs to me that the bike's been left outside a lot um, if you don't care about that kind of stuff then by all means don't even waste what I'm about to say on a purchase but for me when I look at a motorcycle I look at it for a couple things an investment I don't want to lose any money I want to be able to enjoy it have a good time with it and then when I go to sell it I want to be able to at least recoup what I have in it maybe make some money depending on the type of motorcycle, but for the most part, break even. And it's harder to do that if you buy a bike and it arrives to you and it just looks like 
haggard mess. So the bad boy that I just recently had that I just sold to my dad to purchase this bike, 33,000 miles on that bike. It needed a lot of little things, but I got it for a good deal. And all the NOS parts are still out there. I replaced a lot of stuff with factory NOS pieces. And there's a couple of things I did notice right off the bat on this bike that I'm gonna do the same thing with. The hard to find parts for the Dyna Daytona are all there. The air cleaner, the seat, the backrest. When I was out looking for that bike, those three things had to be on the motorcycle. And yes, of course the paint needs to look good too, but those were first and foremost. Like I said, up close pictures of the motor, both sides up close of the front wheel, rear wheel, around the brake calibers and rotors. And then also lower legs. The front of your lower legs, they're just a, they're a clear coated aluminum. They just look like crap. You know, it, this bike were really, really great shape. So I'm very thrilled on that, but those do get buggered up a lot too. Also hand controls. I pointed out how clean the buttons were on the hand controls. Out in the sun, out in the whatever. If the bike has a lot of miles, if the guy says, oh, this bike's got 10,000 miles on it, but all the like the turn signals or the start button is worn out, like just the start button, the white letters are worn out, bike probably has more than 10,000 miles on it. They just switch the speedometer or whatever else. So you gotta be kind of, you know, on the fence on that kind of stuff. I, however, was lucky to get a bike with full, full documentation on every maintenance record with the mileage on there up to 2021. So the last time he took it into the shop was in 2021, went through the entire bike, brake fluids, tires, everything. So the bike is ready to go. Another big reason why this was like the perfect motorcycle for me was I'm able to get on it and just ride it. I mean, I literally, it came off the truck, turned the key, started up. I also try to look for bikes that haven't been touched a lot. Reason being is I bought in bikes that have had simple little things like aftermarket turn signals, but man, they hacked up so much of the harness just to put some turn signals on it. But this bike is untouched. As far as purchasing the motorcycle goes, I do wire transfers 100% of the time. I never do anything with PayPal. I never do anything with any of these other apps. I prefer wire transfers. Every bank will have a wire and transfer route number. In this situation, my bank talked directly with his bank. I didn't even have to be involved and the money went straight to him. As far as shipping goes, I'm a hog member. So as a hog member, you actually get discounted shipping. Discounted shipping might not seem like a lot. I mean, it's only maybe a few hundred bucks, but when I was getting this bike quoted to get shipped to me, it was a lot of money. And I ended up saving with the hog membership, probably almost $400 on shipping it. I still paid more to have this bike shipped than any other motorcycle I've ever had shipped before. But that's the world we live in right now. Everything's a lot higher. I haven't had a bike shipped in probably three years, four years maybe. Well, obviously the prices have gone up since then. The hog membership definitely saved me, like I said, somewhere in the ballpark of uh, three to $400. There's you ship it. There's all these other type of great sites you can use. Make sure you get your shipping quote first because if your budget, let's say your budget is $10,000, shipping sometimes can be upwards to over $1,000, which in this case it was. And if you're not prepared for that extra thousand dollars, that could make or break your deal. So, I mean, that's basically about it. And because of getting asking for the detailed photos, I have turned away bikes where the where I can look at the regular photos and be like, man, it's a it's a good deal and it's a nice bike. But if I talk to the guy and he's an asshole where he doesn't want to supply me with any additional photos, I just that's fine. That that's that's no sweat off my back. I'll move on to another bike, a next bike or whatever. There's nothing that I have to have where I need to be treated as if I'm an inconvenience for giving you money on something that you're trying to get rid of. You can do a cashier's check. Some of these trucking companies will do cash on delivery. It costs an additional fee, but they can actually, you send them the money and then when they arrive and make sure that the bike is a legit bike, they will then hand you the cash, which is what happened in one of my most recent deals where I sold a bike, the driver brought cash to me. So either way, those are my points, my tips. That's what's protected me over the past, oh man, 2016, uh, 17 years buying bikes on the internet. Um, and it's worked out every time. I've been very thrilled and I am super, super happy on this motorcycle. So we're gonna leave it off here. And when we pick it back up, I should have some exhaust, a few other little pieces on it, windshield taken off, bike cleaned up, uh, and then we'll go for a nice little ride. So uh, stay tuned.